In this video, Doug Groom will demonstrate how to process GeoEM 3D data using MT Pro and Zonj STS 2D software. Hello, this is Doug Groom again. And uh, now we are going to look at processing data that was collected in the field. And we are going to start out with the data processing program called MT Pro. Uh, in this case, uh, there's an icon on the, the desktop. You can either uh, access it through the icon or you can access it as we reviewed previously uh, directly from the GeoDM software. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the file. The data file is called a GTS file. So it has a survey name and then .gts as the file name. I'm going to add GTS file and add the GTS file. And I am going to pull up uh, this was a fairly long line, and I think I will pull up maybe just the last five setups, which would be ten soundings, since each setup was one sounding. So these are going from station in position uh, 111 up to 118. And I'm going to click on Open. And these are the file names. Now the array names, uh, they are all different because we had changed the array names when we went to a new setup. Uh, if you do the multiple acquisitions at the same location uh, and you don't change the array name, uh, let's say you collected some data and then you decided you want to add more data for that same station. Uh, you can just collect it again. And uh, then in the processing software, it will add those two files together. But every one of these is in a different location, so we gave it a new name. So these are the positions. And uh, so if we look at these, so it looks like we're starting at uh, three forty two. And going up to uh, eight seventy six. Okay. So, uh, as I mentioned, we are going from uh, position. To 876 and we started at 342. Okay, and uh, right now we have do not process the 93.75 hertz data, and uh, that's simply because we did not collect data at that uh, that, that frequency sample rate. Uh, because we were getting, uh, we were only looking down to 500 meters and we're getting more than that without spending the time to collect that very low frequency data. So we're going to get data down to about 2 hertz with this. Now there's quite a bit of data in here. So it takes some time 
to do the processing. This will take uh, maybe a minute or two. Okay. All right. So now what we're seeing is the apparent resistivity curve. The red curve is the X direction that is parallel to line. And the blue curve is in the Y direction that is perpendicular to line. And if we go up here to the plot layout, which will display the number of stations that we choose on the line, uh, each one of these setups only had two stations, so we'll do two. And we've got that one, two, three, four different setups. And uh, you notice some scattering here. We may want to edit some of the data out of here. And in order to edit it, you simply go to File, or under File, there's the, uh, there's the pencil, and do a left click on those data points that you want to eliminate. It is actually pretty good. And let's go down to the next one. Yeah, that's there are some obvious outliers on this. Next one. Next, Oop. there's some serious editing required on this. Um, it was very inconsistent with the previous. scattered data, we want to clean it up a bit. Okay, so we edited the impedance curves, current resistivity. Let's look at the phase, see if there's anything that is kind of out of line there. Okay, so we came up here to the plot type. We looked at the phase and the resistivity. Um, the other thing that you will 
look at fairly regularly is the positive transform. And that's going to give you a, an idea of the depth that you're achieving. And we're getting down on this one, oh, to about 900 meters or so. 1,800. And this one's about 700 meters. And we can look at the other ones as well. Okay. So the other thing we can do on this is look at a 2D depth section, and not based on an inversion, but what's called a Bostic transformation. This is a point by point data transformation of the uh, of resistivity and depth. And uh, that will give you 1D, uh, 1D transformations for each station. And then the 2D image is created by taking those 1D, lining them up, and putting a smoothing filter uh, from station to station. And that smoothing filter is called an EMAP, E-M-A-P filter. So we're going to go down to an EMAP section. And here we have our section. And we've got a relatively con Productive layer down here at about, mm, I'd say, uh, uh, somewhere around 90 to about 120 meters. <clears throat> and then that's thinning off at the end of the line. And uh, we've got a bit of a conductor up here. At the, at the surface, and it looks like we're hitting basement down here somewhere around 500 meters or so. Now we can change the parameters by going to view and display parameters, and down here we can change how much smoothing. The higher this number, the more it's going to be smooth. Uh, the color scale, right now it's a log scale. We can change that to a, uh, a linear scale. And the depth is uh, right now a linear depth as well. Auto color scale, if we take the head off, we can put our own color scale on there. And uh, we'll play with that a little bit. Right now it's going from about two and a half millimeters to about 56 ohmmeters. Let's change that to 40, for example. Okay, so it doesn't change the data. It only changes how those colors are displayed. And by reducing that, uh, we've lost some of the resolution here for that, that, uh, that conductor. So we've got the data, and now this data can be exported in a number of different formats. We can export the EMAP file, which is basically just a, uh, it's an ASCII uh, DAT file. And that could be pulled into SURF or other contouring software programs. And, uh, we can also export it out to an EDI file. Uh, most of the academic and uh, commercial MT inversion programs will accept EDI files. So let's look at that. We're going to um, export it as uh, an EDI file. So the EDI data 
ID is basically going to be the file name, and each one of these is different, and it's named for the location. And the uh, these are the positions along the line. And let's enter a latitude and a longitude on here. Now you only have to enter one. You just choose your, your location. Let's say that you measured your lat long at this position 724. And that happened to be a latitude of, um, let's just say, uh, 31.45678 and a longitude of uh, minus 121.87654. So once we've done that, we go down to calculate the latitude and longitude coordinate, and then what it will do. It knows the line azimuth, and it knows the separation between spaces. So it can calculate the lat long of all of those soundings. Okay. So we've got the hat. Now what we can do uh, is export these EDI files. And that will allow you to read them into other inversion programs. So we'll just do this. Export EDI. And uh, we'll just go to UDM uh, 3D data. And we'll just pick something that's Let's uh, just put it in that, for example. And okay, and now we've got all the EDI files in that particular data directory. Data, alpha test, and here are all these EDI files in there. And the other thing we can do is export it as KMZ files. And KMZ files are location files for uh, Google Earth. And so this will allow you to export these files and plot the line uh, on Google Earth map. Now we won't bother doing that at this point. Okay, so we have created those, those files the EDI and the KMZ files, and now we can uh, pull them into other inversion software. Okay. We can export the EMAP file data, and this is the data from That section, so we can do that. I won't bother. It's very straightforward. Um, you just give it a name, and this is an EMAP file, and uh, and then you would just uh, navigate to where you want to put that and export it, and then you can pull that into Surfer, or uh, GeoTools, or any other, uh, or GeoSoft, or any other contouring software program. Okay. The other thing we can do is export this data out to the Zong uh, AVG file, uh, and that goes to an SCS 2D uh, inversion program. So we'll do that. And we will call this 
Um, we'll just call this Posa. So now we've got that out there, now we can do an inversion on this, this data. So we're going to invert it in the SES2D. And we're going to do new. And we're going to go look for it where we had put it previously. Um, SES2D data. And that was in POSA, 11.116 ABG, open. Okay, station interval is 78 meters. Uh, that means each sounding is 78 meters apart. The dipole lengths were also 78 meters on this. And this is actually a tensor. Um, tensor uh, MT measurement. Using natural fields, it was actually using the HSAMT transmitter. But as far as the data is concerned, that just looks like natural field data. And uh, we have both TM and TE, which is basically the X direction and Y direction. And we will continue. This is the elevation. We didn't have any elevation information entered. Uh, this is the separation between the stations and the azimuth. So just click on that. And we'll just go to the survey configuration of 75 degrees for the line azimuth. And here are my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stations. Okay. The top row thickness is uh, says fifty eight point five. Well, with the frequency band that we're using. Uh, we get much better resolution in the near surface. So I'm going to change that top layer to 20 meter thickness. And the rotor row multiplier, as we go down layers and layers going deeper, uh, it becomes a little bit thicker each layer. And I'm going to change that to 1.05 so it doesn't go up so quickly. And I will increase the number of rows so we can get about a thousand meters depth here. Or actually, I think it was closer to about 800 meters is what we did. So here's 77. Okay. And now the other thing that this software does, in order to avoid the... Um, in order to avoid edge effects on the, on the data inversion, it buffers those edges by adding four stations on each side. For a short survey like this, that's way too many. That's, all, that's uh, practically as many as the entire line. Um, so I'm just going to add one station to it. So I'm going to go from 266, which is adding one, and uh, on the, uh, the beginning of the line, and uh, And 
and going to 952, which is adding one station at the end of the line. Okay. So I'm going from 266 to 968. This is the segment of the line that we're going to be looking at. And continue. This is just how much filtering is done. And these are basically, I'm going to leave this as the, at the defaults. Uh, these are just various constraints and horizontal, vertical smoothing uh, and uh, other constraints. I'm just going to hit enter. And Save this. Now this is just the starting model here. So we can do a 1D or a 2D inversion. We could go directly to the 2D. But if you do a 1D first, and then it will use the results of the 1D inversion for each station, and, um, and use that as the starting model for the 2D inversion. So let's go ahead and do the 1D. Okay, here's the 1D. And now we can review that data. So the, uh, the solid lines are the models, and this data fits the model pretty well. Uh, the red ones are things that we had edited out previously. So that's the first station the next station, the next station. So you can see that the, uh, the stations fit the model fairly well. Okay. And if you like, you can go and you know, get rid of some of those other things that are not fitting the model that well. So we're going way out of line. That one is way out of line. So anyhow, you can do a 1D inversion, and then you can actually edit that 1D inverted data for your starting model. Now exit review. And now we're going to do the 2D inversion. Okay, so we've done the 2D inversion, and now what we'll do is actually contour this data, and we'll start using the uh, this home contact current software as well. And that is called modsec.exe. So we'll open that back up again. Starting at 342, going to 876. This is the width and the height, and then this is the color scale uh, in log, so uh, log of 0 is 1, and 3 is 1,000, so this is going from uh, 1 ohm to 1,000 ohms, we may need to change that. Continue. This is just information about the survey. Continue. Okay. So we can see basically down here around 200 meters or so. It looks like we've got a fairly 
consistent basement out of some really strong, uh, much resistive way down deep. Um, at that at the edge, it's hard to uh, to put a lot of credence. And we have a conductor, a little little bit of resistor surface. Um, but let's change this scale. Instead of going to a thousand, looks like most of this data is there at about oh, a couple hundred, uh, couple hundred L meters. So let's go to edit limits and scale. And uh, we're going to go from one ohm meter to maybe two point three. And again, this is long, so two point three is going to be uh, somewhere between two hundred to four hundred ohm meters. And continue. Okay. So we've got fairly strong definition of this. And uh, yeah. So we've got a little bit moderately resistive at that end. We've got sort of a conductor coming through here, a little bit of a resistor. And then conductive again down here at, at around uh, 100 and 120 meters or so. And we could that. Uh, We can just play with these scales all we want. And, uh, change that color fill. Actually, I've never tried to do another one. Okay, uh, now you can export this data as well. You can export it as a uh, CSV file to read into Excel, or PNG, a Surfer file, a GSOP file. Surfer and GSOP are uh, contouring, so with a little bit more power than, than these, these simple contouring programs. Okay. This is an introduction to the, uh, the data processing and the data inversion. Thank you for watching this Geode EM3D data processing video.